And now, now the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. Watch, Watch global. global. Support local. local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. You might not be an A, but you are a B Plus. All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to another B Plus podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Saturday. You know what that means. It's time for the NXT experience. That's right. We have rebranded. I am. I said the wrong name. I'm your host, the Unchained Experience, and I am joined by the Danderfield Experience. I don't know if I'm the Danderfield Experience for NXT because I feel like NXT are fine with having normal names. Well, but the Viking Experience made a made an appearance on oh, NXT they did this too. Week. Yeah, wearing their War Raiders shirts. It's very yes. confusing. I'm the Danderfield, the Manderfield <laughs> Experience. Danderfield, the Manderfield mm. Experience. Yeah, for the WWE one in the write up, like in the show notes or whatever, I called you the Dan Derek. I did Field. see that. It did not roll off yeah, the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's. I tried. I tried. Uh, but let's talk NXT and NXT UK. You are, of course, filling in for Big Boy Mikey, who has some personal things going on. Our thoughts are with Big Boy Mikey at the moment. But, uh, you know, th- these things have to be done. I couldn't do King of Sports without him. I couldn't do it. It felt weird. Yeah, understandable. Understandable. Yeah. But NXT, everyone watches NXT. So. And look, i got to be honest, I'm not renowned for my ability to watch NXT. Just because if NXT was on like Sundays in the US, if it was on Mondays here, I would absolutely watch it. But after five hours of wrestling, it's then it's a lot. It's a lot. So I don't know if I need to. I think hmm, if I wasn't doing the the WWE podcast, I'd probably just fuck Raw right off, maybe watch the the highlights package of Raw. But it's Mm. just like, it's just, it's hard to commit. Even with some of the shakeups, though, because some of some of the shakeups mean that Raw could get more interesting, but it's hard with it that's, being three hours. For that's it to be just the thing to me is that um, it is three hours. So I like I normally because I have the ability to watch it live, um, I do. But I almost kind of want to start watching it maybe later in the day because then I at least don't have the the break for ads because that's you know yeah. half an hour in itself. Yeah, I'm going to make a bigger commitment to NXT. Maybe I'll watch NXT a little bit delayed, like I'll watch it on the weekends, although we're coming into hockey season. Yeah. Can't win. It's too much going on. But someone who... <laughs> NXT is NXT is what wrestling should be, though. Like, if you can only... if I, I would say to people, if you can only watch one wrestling show, it would be NXT or MLW. Yeah, NXT is wrestling as opposed to sports entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but it will start in the UK now. NXT UK is something you know. Big Boy and I have talked about a few times, uh, and and I think CJ as well. We've talked about like it's 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 not it's not quite. And obviously, it's, it hasn't been going as long, but it's not quite where NXT is. Uh, like the characters just don't feel like they're connecting as much. Do you get that with NXT UK? Uh, because as well? I don't really know anyone who isn't Pete Dunne or Ray Ripley. Um, yeah. I have trouble with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just feel right. like and straight straight off the bat, it's in Brooklyn as well, which is weird. It's like NXT UK from Brooklyn, New York, and it's like what? what? Yeah, what's going yeah. on? Can confirm. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. It's just odd. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the show starts off with Gallus, the Coffee Brothers, which every time I write it in my notes, I, I write it as coffee, like that you drink, even though I know that's not how you spell it, but they're the coffee brothers to me. And I feel like that would be a better gimmick for them than what they do. I feel like if their gimmick was that they were like really angry baristas (laughs) that, that like can't get people's names right, no matter how hard they try, like they're slightly illiterate. Yeah. I think, I feel like that would be better than what they do. I feel like that would be good if they were like Melbourne people and they're like just snooty Melbourne baristas. (laughs) It's just like, yeah, and they had like names like yeah. Jason, but it was like Jason. It's like J A H Y S I N, Jason. <laughs> oh yeah. god, that sounds awful. They'd be vegan too, right? Absolutely, all They'd the quality people vegan. are. <laughs> all the quality. <laughs> so they take on Humberto Carrillo and Ra- Raul Mendoza. 
Uh, I always get the Raul wrong. But yeah, Raul Mendoza. Uh, they're a really exciting team. I like them. This was enjoy considering I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, this was really no one does standards. No one does. Yeah, this was enjoyable <laughs> so, you know, to watch. It was. It was like it was your classic power versus speed. You know, the Gallus doing the big boy things, and uh, you know, Carrillo and Mendoza doing doing the flippy boy things. It was pretty fun. But mm-hmm. it's weird because yeah, this whole show is weird. It's in Brooklyn, and they're doing a bunch of NXT UK versus NXT guys. Other than the main event. It's all pretty much, you know, the Americans versus the UK. And it, it just it just feels disconnected to me. Like, because it's like, obviously, the UK guys are going to win because this is NXT UK. Yeah. So there's no stakes. Yeah. And it was just, um, I don't know. It was, I wasn't crazy about it. I mean, yeah. the match was good, but it's just like, I didn't feel a whole lot of chemistry going on. It was just good wrestling. I didn't feel like there was any story. But that being said, I don't know what the fuck's going on anyway. So, yeah. So mechanically... Good match. Mm-hmm. They did a good power versus speed match. Moves were executed well, uh, but there's no emotion. And that's kind of the story for the whole show. Uh, we get uh, Cassius Ono, who corrects the interviewer. It's not Cassius. It's Cassius. Cassius. Cassius, which, I don't know, that sounds like a bogan way to say it. Yeah. Um, I've been calling him Cassius, but yeah. um, is it Cassius? That's what he said. It's, it's, not, it's not Cassius. It's Cassius. Like that sounds that sounds weird. Sounds, Cassius Ono. It sounds fake. Cassius. Sounds fake, yeah. but okay. How's it going, Cassius? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh and he yeah, he corrects the interviewer says he's Cassius and uh you know, he talks about the mixed successes he's had, but he's here to show the Brits the true British European wrestling style, which is funny because he's American. Uh and yeah, and he's there to he, like he picks on Legero, he pulls out Legero, who's the guy with the horns. And uh, yeah, he says that he's going to show him what real, real wrestling veteran is. I, I enjoy Cassius Ono's shtick at the moment. I think he's what he's doing in NXT UK is better than what he had in NXT. So he's made the permanent switch, as he. Yeah, we we talked about it a few times on the show. Like we think that we think what they're going for is he's 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 kind of the veteran. That's he's kind of like a gatekeeper for mm-hmm. NXT, mm-hmm. and so he, we think he's going to bounce around the brands. Like once they start up in NXT Japan, he'll probably go there for a while too. Okay, because he's he's such a well traveled guy, he can work any style. Yeah, I don't yeah. know too much about him. I only sort of know um, from his. He had a fight against Matt Riddle. Did I make yes, that correct. up? Yeah. yeah, no, no, he did. Yeah, the, yeah. the knockout artists. Yeah. yeah, that's sort of the only sort of stuff that I met. But yeah, he was fun. Yeah, I, I enjoy his work in the NXT UK brand. I think that it's given him a shot in the arm, and I'm really enjoying what he's doing. Uh, then we get the package of Pete Dunne and Walter, which ends with Jordan Devlin and Walter face to face, which is really cool. Yeah, how scary is Walter? He's so. <laughs> I don't know. Like everyone says that, and like obviously he is. He's a big, intimidating man, but he also kind of has a bit of a baby face. Like a literal baby face. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can say that. There's a sorry. I'm just looking for a conversation that I was having with my friends because before Walter went to um, WWE, I had no idea who he was. I had literally yeah. no idea, except for the fact that my friends who were like, you know, we watch indie wrestling only, rah rah rah. Um, right. They were always talking about him, and cool um, so yeah, yeah. Um, so like any time they would like talk about someone, me and my mate Benny didn't know. We'd be like, is this Walter? <laughs> like and it became like a thing, but now because he's like, um, he's like in WWE, he's not cool anymore. <laughs> it's like we need. To, and so yesterday in our group chat, I was like, you know what? We need to bring back the Walter chat. So I've made some points. One, Walter needs to be louder and angrier and have access to a time machine. Two, whenever <laughs> Walter's not on screen, all the other character characters should be asking, "Where's Walter?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, damn it! I know I didn't probably shouldn't have put that in there, but yeah, I <laughs> I uh, was chuckling violently to myself when I typed that, so I wanted to share it with the world. <laughs> I think that there's a niche market for like wrestling based Simpsons quotes, like there's AFL Simpsons quotes and things like that. I think there needs to be like a wrestling one. Yeah, well, I mean, there is PWA capitalize on it. Oh. PWA do their PWA cross Simpsons memes all the time. All right. Well, I'm from Melbourne, so I don't know about Yeah, well, that. get get around PWA because it's better. 
I shouldn't say it's better. I kind of host an Aussie Graps podcast. I like everyone. But yeah, no, Volta and Volta and uh, and Devlin have history. So having them face to face at the end there, it's one of those things that's weird about NXT UK. It's almost like the you're going to get more enjoyment out of it if you know these people from outside NXT, which makes it very different to NXT itself because NXT, when you get there, you, you, it's starting from scratch whereas nxt uk they're kind of like you've watched these guys in progress right yeah and half the audience are sitting there like oh, well no why is this interaction meaningful this means nothing to me yeah i so can it's... imagine especially if it was in brooklyn um maybe in the uk it might be you seem to have, like there was probably more of a an understanding there but i can imagine in brooklyn people would be like wtf mate <laughs> yeah yeah so then we get kona reza it's dave mastiff Big bopper, uh, Mastiff wins, lol, of course, because NXT UK and Kona Reeves is not a UK guy. So, again, it was, there was just sort of no drama to it. Yep, fair. And I'm I'm not a fan of Kona Reeves either. I, It's hard for me because I'm just like, I don't, <laughs> I don't have any investment in any of these people. Even like the NXT people, I'm like, who are these people? Really? Like when we get to talking about like undisputed era and shit, you, you like you. Oh watch no, all no, no. The takeovers. no 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 no! I know like, I know the people who are on NXT. I the NXT oh, right, right. people on this show on the NXT UK show. Oh, because like, they're the lower the lower card yeah. version. Yeah, right, right. Gotcha. Like these are the people that are headlining the Largo Loop. Yeah. At, at the moment, yeah. So they're like the house show NXT people. Uh, so then we got Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews cutting a promo. They're excited to be in New York, uh, and they talk about Mustache Mountain. For some reason, I guess they have a match next week and they want to be the first ever Welsh tag team champions. And I'm like, you guys know Moustache Mountain aren't the tag team champions, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, it was just weird. Yeah. Why are you saying Moustache Mountain weird? Moustache Mountain? Moustache Mo- Mountain. I don't know. How was I saying it? You now I'm really mu- self-conscious. You're like Moustache Mountain. It's Moustache Mountain. It's Moustache Mountain. But you're going Moustache. Mous- moustache. You're, you're being like Mous- Moustache Ali. Like mustachioed gentleman. It's mustachioed gentleman. It's stash, no, not mustachioed. Stuff. Mustachioed gentlemen wear mustaches. It's mustache mountain. Okay, I'm so confused. Okay, you've made me really self conscious of how I speak. Yeah, that's how I roll. What is words? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, but they're not. They're not the tag team champions. So why are they talking about them when they're talking about becoming the first Welsh tag team champions? Well, I don't understand. Look, it's all made up. All right, it's all fake. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> Whenever you see something like that, it's just a wizard did it. You're just you're just one of the territory guys now. Back in my day, the belts were just props. We'd give them to anyone who needed a boost when they walked out through the curtain. Is that what territory guys are like? Yeah, you haven't heard about like the old days where like the belts like because they were in different places each night and stuff. The crowd didn't actually know who the champions were going to be. Ah. and stuff so they would just give the title to whoever like obviously not the best companies or whatever but like yeah that's that's a thing that happened well you know yeah they, they were literally props that's why people call the you know, wrestling titles props because it but it's kind of evolved since then well you know yeah anyway <laughs> um we then get Rhea ripley so the first t- first time on the show that you get someone you care about yeah. Rhea ripley versus casey catanzaro who is also someone you would be familiar with, right? Yeah, she's done a few rumble spots and whatnot. Yeah, I know. I um, I know Casey, and this was a fun match. I really enjoyed this. Rhea Ripley is a fucking star. Yeah, she is. She's so good, and I I really like Casey Catanzaro as well. I think she's amazing, and the their power versus agility, like it was probably better than the tag team match. To be honest with you, this was probably the match actually that I enjoyed most on the card. Now, is this Mrs. Ricochet? Yes, okay. Casey Catanzaro is Mrs. Ricochet. Yeah. yeah, she's American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, um, I yeah. shouldn't say that because she's a person in her own right. Um, yes, that's why I corrected you. She's American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just like the first time I saw her, I was like, "Oh, who is this?" And then someone was like, "This is Ricochet's girlfriend." And I was like, "Oh." Question: Is it mansplaining if I correct you on diminishing a woman because you are a woman? That's a very confusing situation. We're I don't in. think that you were really. Um, because you weren't explaining how until <laughs> I was until I corrected myself. The fact that you just, yes, you no, just I understand. Oh, sorry, I wasn't sure if you were joking I'm, or not. I'm yeah, I'm trying to be ironic, but I'm very tired. Fair call, fair call. Um, <laughs> she is one point five two meters. She is tiny. Yes, very small. Yeah, um, but yeah, very very small. This and a, Rhea Ripley is very big. Yeah, this was probably the highlight of the show 
for me, I really enjoyed this match. It was lots of fun. I like the flippy shit and Casey does the flippy shit. Yeah. So. And just the, the, the counters were so good. Like Rhea catching her and flipping, like she'd catch her from the crossbody and flip her straight up into the suplex. Like it was fucking nothing. Hmm. Like it was so good. It was like, it was like wrestling a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when, when you wrestle the pillow on the trampoline, we all did it. It's okay. I never had a trampoline. So like, I never did that, but you never had a trampoline. No, deprived childhood. We had a wow. We had, that's that's abuse almost. Well, to be fair, we had a pool. Um, okay. So I mean, like I would do flips in the pool, um, but yeah, no, we our, most of our because our pool was about twenty twenty meters, so that took up most of the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Childhood okay, oppression with Dan Sanderfield. That makes sense. Did you have like a balcony that you could dive off into the pool at least? No. No? no. We, had di- yeah, we had a diving abused. board. But it wasn't, okay. it wasn't okay. very high. That's cool. They invested in a diving board. That's all right yeah. then. That's all right. Uh, so yeah, so that was match of the night for me as well. And then backstage, uh, she attacks. Rhea attacks after the match. Of course, Rhea wins and then beats her down mercilessly. And then backstage approaches her like, oh, that's what happens when you try to step into my division. Oh. You'll end up in medical. But Piper Niven shows up. And kind of chases Rhea off because Rhea's just a big old bully. She really is, and she's, she's so good at it. She's like, so, so good. good at it. The change, like, for her from her like May Young Classic days is insane. Like, she has done such an awesome job. Yeah, just like watching the two May Young Classics, right? Yeah, and just going from one to the other, it's like wow. Like the evolution is freaking insane. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm really happy for Rhea. I want her to come back and dominate like NXT proper. Because yep. I think she would do really well there. Like, especially like once, say, Shayna Baszler moves on, mm-hmm. like Rhea Ripley can become that final boss heel type character. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. Uh, then we get Ginny who gets asked a question and she doesn't answer. Not really anything to tell there. Ginny is uh, Big Boy's least favorite woman in NXT UK. Ah. Oh, why? Yeah. Because he's like, there's just no connection. Like, I just don't, I don't get it. Like, she wrestles well, but that's it. And you saw it here. Fair enough. <laughs> like, this is the first time, this is the first segment of Ginny. Like, I like Ginny. I think she's got a cool character and stuff because she's just kind of, you know, snobby bitch kind of stuff. Like, she would fit in with Bourne and Aaliyah. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, this segment was just, I was like, why was this here? I didn't care about this at all. Yeah. Again, I don't know what's going on. Please come back, <laughs> big boy Mikey. Come back soon. I don't want to have to look at This is such such compelling radio. I know. I have no idea what's happening. What are we yelling about? Loud noises. Uh, um, I, I am far more into mainstream <laughs> NXT. Mainstream. Yeah, we'll get there. Cut. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll I'll get there. We're almost there. We're at the main event. We're at the main event. Zach Gibson, promo, challenging the UK division for a non-title match. Uh, tells Williams and Jordan this is the closest they'll ever get. Now, Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan are sort of a thrown together tag team, but they've been winning a lot Can lately. We, Kenny they've Williams been... sounds like a country music singer. Yes, he does. Who gave him that name? Is that was is that his like born name? Born. I think it may be. Like it's the name that he used prior to NXT. It's not like an NXT creation. It's not like, you know, whatever Jonah Rock's shark name is gonna be. It's <laughs> Jaws. Just call him Jaws. Have you seen that? Have you seen Jonah Rock's I've seen shark the get I've up? seen the gear. Yeah. He's with Stokely Hathaway, which makes me really happy, but also they've put him in these this shark jacket with these fins, and I'm really worried about it. Really worried. I don't know. Anyway. Jonah's fantastic. I'm sure he can pull off whatever. Like <laughs> yeah. I feel like I saw him in like zebra print for like didn't he used to wear yeah. like zebra print? Yeah. Like he's worn some interesting gear in the past. I'm just worried they're gonna make him some kind of shark character. Shark boy and lover girl. <laughs> right. Yes, who can be his lover girl? His wife. Uh, his wife is the only lover girl for him. I he's so wholesome on like Rhea Ripley's from Adelaide, so you could No. Jo- like she's not really much of a lava girl though to me like jonah rock uh, despite like all his wrestling accomplishments to me his most endearing quality is like how much he loves his wife like all over social yeah. media he is just like loves his wife i don't know that's why i love matt jackson as well i don't give a shit about nick jackson but like matt jackson is just <laughs> like so in love with his wife it's so okay so cody then as well no because like Cody is like, my wife's hot. Look how hot my wife is. My wife is so hot. 
Whereas, like, oh, I feel like he treats her like a queen. Oh, man. yeah, absolutely. But there's like a real worship going on there. Absolutely. But when he talks about her, he talks about how beautiful she is and how hot she is, and like, which is nice. Look, I'm gonna side. But Matt, but Matt Jackson is like, she's the brains of the operation, and he's like, kind of you thing. know, and they've yeah. also they've been together like five ever. Like they've been together since I think they were in high school, and it's just like I don't know. They're just nice. He's just a nice Christian boy who loves his wife. Anyway, being distracted. <laughs> yeah. We this is what we do, Dendas. This is why we have you on the show so we can talk about everything but the wrestling. Yeah, that's that's kind of your job here. Uh, yeah. So Kenny Williams and uh, and Amir Jordan, they're sort of a thrown together team, but they've been on a winning streak, and so now they're getting a match with the champions. But it's a non-title match, and grizzled young veterans walk away and take the count out win, which means that technically they have a win over the champions and should get a title match, I guess. Yeah. So this was the first match on the show that actually had NXT UK story implications. Yeah. Which, considering it's the main event, pretty shitty. Yeah. Fair call. Fair call. <laughs> yeah. um, and then and then we get Pete Dunne, a little promo thing from Pete Dunne about, you know, everyone thought Pete Dunne was going to be going to Raw or SmackDown right now. I don't think he's done, pun intended, um, in <laughs> NXT UK just yet. I think that the him and Walter have so much... Um, potential as a pair, I think yeah. that that can grow. I would see them probably going to normal NXT before I would see them see him going up to, or not shouldn't say up, uh, going across to to Raw or SmackDown because I, I yeah. don't think that the I don't think the roster is at a place where Pete would fit in at the moment. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I didn't want him to go up, but a lot of people thought he would. But then this promo sort of put that to bed. He was just like, you know, people, you, do you really think I'm going to go anywhere? I had that title for 685 days. You think I'm going to walk away? Um, yeah. And yeah, just cuts, a, just cuts a mean promo about the chase and how he lives for that chase. And he references when Tyler Bate was the champion. Did you remember that Tyler Bate held that NXT UK title? Uh, no, I, I didn't. No. Tyler Bate was the first champion. Pete Dunne was the second. And Pete Dunne practically just erased Tyler Bate from the record. Like, I don't think anyone remembers that Tyler Bate actually was the first champion because Pete Dunne is so synonymous with that title now. I feel like Pete, to me, yeah, it's always been Pete Dunne because, like, Pete Dunne had the championship when he came to Melbourne, didn't he? I remember him having it in his mouth and being like, who is this guy? Is he in the new (laughs) bands? Is that why I don't know him? Um, Right. Yeah. How times have changed. I now know who he is, even if I don't watch him. Um, yeah, I think that this has a lot to to grow. And I feel like by having, like, someone – I think the mindset seems to be, like, people in um, NXT and NXT UK, it's like they're – the perceived kind of, like, goal is to get on the main roster. And I don't think that that's what it should be. I think it should be no. to have – just amazing matches and tell amazing stories. And we've seen it so much like we've seen it with Tyler Breeze is obviously the main example. Um, Gable and Jordan, even Enzo and Cass. Um, I know I'm not allowed to mention them, um, but it's like. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a big fan. But <laughs> even, I used to be. That's why it's so it hurts so much because I used to be a big fan. Yeah, I've got their pop vinyls because I loved them so much. And like they're just, yeah. they're hidden towards the back. It was like I paid forty dollars yeah. for them, so I'm not. Have you seen now that they're not they're not Enzo and Big Cass? They're Enzo N Z O and Kaz X L. Yeah, I've I've been on the internet. Uh, like what the fuck? Yeah. Kaz X L. Anyway, um, so many Z's. What is this? 1997. <laughs> um, so it doesn't always necessarily translate. So I think the goal should be to have three to four strong brands that are strong in their own right and it not just be like I'm going to put on really good matches so I can go and be in the mid card of like the main roster no and I think you'll find that if you ask some of the lower card guys on Raw or Smackdown their goal would be to go back to NXT somehow (laughs) yeah and I think Johnny Gargano he um, had a big rant about it saying he's like why do people keep asking when I'm going on the main show as far as I'm concerned I am on the main show yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I agree. I agree completely. Let's, speaking of the main show, NXT itself, the actual American Florida NXT, starts with Velveteen Dream 
defending the North American Championship against Buddy Murphy. I don't remember the last time I saw a match this good on television. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B Plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Hey everyone, just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that be on the field, in the gym, on the gaming field. That's right, they have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods, you can get coffee beans, you can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life, specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game, and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com, and for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com, enter the code B+, at checkout. You don't watch 205 Live? No, uh, you no? you edit yeah, the right. WWE okay. cast. No, yeah, I know, I know, I yeah, I know. Yeah, no, so um, <laughs> yeah, this is Buddy Murphy. Though. I know, like Buddy, and and this is Velvet Tangent. Like they don't have bad matches. No. There's no such thing as a bad match for these two. No, and it's just like, especially like with it being the opening match, I just wasn't prepared for how amazing this was. I was very confused because I forget that NXT is not live. Um, so I was like, right. but Buddy is on SmackDown now. Bird, bird. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it was nice to see him, um, I guess, return for for a match before, um, yeah, venturing onto the main roster. This was a fantastic match. I'm glad that Dream retained. I think it made sense that he retained. Um, But, yeah, what a phenomenal contest. Yeah, I think that was the whole – I think Bunny Murphy was just like, you know, I didn't get to show my stuff in NXT – can I go back and have a killer match before heading up to SmackDown or heading over to SmackDown? I, I honestly think like he's built up. He's, he's kind of one of triple H's guys now, mm-hmm. buddy Murphy. Yep. Uh, Cause he went from NXT and he, and it, you know, he was in the tag team division and stuff in NXT. And then he was, he was sort of languishing in the mid card on NXT and, and he cut weight himself and was like, send me to 205, send me to 205, send me to 205. And he cut weight without permission. Right. And so then Triple H was like, all right, fine, we'll give you a shot. And then he tore things up, became champion, and now he's being called over to SmackDown. And he, I, I'm imagining in my head, he was like, let me go and, and have that one like great singles match on NXT because I never got to have it. Mm. And I think this is what that was. Yeah, I, I think that this should have been the main event of the show personally um, because it did yeah. kind of create a little bit of a – not a lull because NXT is like so packed – um, and there was a cu- still a couple of great matches to go on, but this should have been the main event. I agree with you, especially with especially with how the main event played out. I think this was a much more satisfying match. Um, the the count out spot that they so like everything from the first near count out was just nonstop incredible stuff, and that second count out where um Buddy realized like he couldn't get Dream into the ring and he needed to break the count quickly like it just it was just so perfectly put together and then dream capitalizing gets the win and defends the title i thought it was amazing yeah absolutely i like this was the match that was like i'm gonna start watching nxt properly now i'm going to uh it'll probably like be on like as i said maybe a saturday morning instead of 
Saturday morning cartoons. I'll have some Saturday morning graphs. Um, right. Yeah, it was just such a great, such a great match. And it's not even like me being a muddy, a muddy, a massive Buddy Murphy stan. Um, it was just a, it was just a great contest. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things, uh, you know, there was a period in time where NXT's weekly show had a match of this caliber every week. Um, I wouldn't say, I'd say they have a match of this caliber now every two weeks or three weeks, but you know, they always have great matches, but this was next level. This was like one of the better NXT TV matches. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's definitely worth tuning in. Street Profits cut a promo. Uh, they're going to knock on Regal's door and they do, but out comes the Viking experience wearing War Raiders shirts, new War Raiders shirts, by the way. Those are new. Those are brand new. Those have not been for sale for long. <laughs> Can I just clarify? The War Raiders is the cap- is the Caterpillar guy, right? The what? The, who's the guy who does the Caterpillar? Is that the War Raiders? No, no, that's that's Heavy Machine. That's what, I was like, why is this guy not doing the Caterpillar? Or, no. not Not to like body shame but like all big dudes <laughs> kind of look the same like those guys sanity um war yeah so war raiders sanity and the what were the heavy machinery they're all yeah. the same okay i mean look i can understand a little bit i i guess uh but but yeah that's yeah the war raiders are the viking experience they're the guys that got called up as viking yep. experience hansen and roe the war raiders and now they're evil and <laughs> the viking experience yep. um but they just had War Raiders shirts made. Like, this is not – I just don't understand any of this. I, To be fair, I wasn't crazy about the name War Raiders. I think that Viking experience is dumb. But I wasn't crazy about the name <laughs> the War Raiders because it sounds like well, – I don't know. It sounds like people On who... the Indies, they were War Machine. Ah, uh, okay. Which was way better. But, but I when they got to – copyright issues with War Machine. With Marvel. That's why – they, they couldn't trademark it, so they had to go with War Raiders. And everyone made fun of War Raiders at first. Uh, like, everyone. Like, when they debuted NXT as War Raiders, everyone was like, War Raiders? What? What is this? And then they, they go to Tony, and, and it's like, oh, wow. Apparently, it can get worse. Yeah, absolutely. Is there, sorry, is there a Marvel character called War, War Machine? Because, like, yeah. is it like... Oh, actually, you know what? I was thinking, I was like... Iron yeah, Man? Yeah, no, because I was thinking of, like, the Black Sabbath song, but that's called um, War Pigs, but it says War Machine in it. As the war right. machine keeps turning. But, yeah, it's actually yeah. called War Pigs. No, wa- war Machine, he's played by... Uh, was it, is it Don Cheadle that plays oh, War Machine yeah. in the Marvel Cinematic yeah, Universe? Yeah, there's too many characters. Oh, I don't. I actually got into a massive fight with um, with Daniel yesterday. Not a fight, but I was just like, Thor is Australian, right? And he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Thor's Norse. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, because for some reason I thought he was Nordic. And he's like, oh, you mean you mean Thor the character? He's like, Chris Hemsworth is Australian. Thor is not Australian. Yes. I'm like, but he talks yes. with an Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is Australian. Thor is a Norse deity who is Asgardian. So he's not even Nordic. He's Asgardian, technically. Yeah. Um, it's- yeah, because in the in the movies as well, the Asgardians aren't actually gods. They're aliens. So the Norse people are wrong. Yeah. It's like... Um, it's a whole yeah, thing. It's like Hamlet. People think Hamlet is English, <laughs> but Han- Hamlet's Danish. But William Shakespeare... Hamlet's Danish? Yeah. Well, there you go. William Shakespeare is English. Who wrote it? But it's set in Denmark. Learning time with Danders. Yeah. Not just a mediocre <laughs> face. Next. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Street Profits are getting a shot at the titles next week, and you've got to think they're going to win, obviously, because War Raiders have gone on to the main roster. Uh, Johnny Champion comes out, cuts a promo. They all tell him, you deserve it, which is weird, because a few weeks ago they were they, they hated the guy. I, I have no idea how to take Johnny Gargano with the NXT crowd. It's very strange, because I thought that Johnny Gargano already had the championship. Um, like previously, no, but no, yeah. he hadn't. No, he just, it was just like he was fighting with Champa and Black, and yeah. yeah. So I didn't realize that this was his first reign, um, because I was like getting a little bit pissed off. It was like I feel like have, being a two-time NXT championship used to be a massive deal. Similar with like Dandis talks about Melbourne, uh, the MCW championship, like 
when <laughs> Dowie James became a two-time champion. That was a massive deal. And now it's kind of yeah. like, well, everyone's getting a two-time championship. You get a two-time championship and you get one. Um, that being said, it's like two people. <laughs> um, anyway, this I thought would have been better if they had have let Gargano talk more. I feel like he was interrupted too soon. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And he was interrupted uh, by by Adam Cole and Undisputed Era, who he referred to as a boy band, which I kind of popped for, asked if they were, you know, in sync. Yeah, when he was like, <laughs> he wouldn't cry like a baby, I massive popped. <laughs> massive. That was like, that was actually laugh out loud laughing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good, all the baby references. But yeah, uh, it, it calls him a boy band, all that stuff. They get angry. They jump him and beat him down. And then we move on to an ad break, which I still think it's weird that they have ad breaks in NXT. Why, why are we getting ads? It bums me out. Yeah, that, it is odd. Um, I really like that they're um, getting – Adam Cole is getting some heat back because he's far too likable and NXT yeah. need a proper heel again, now with Champa out. Um, and I think that this was a really good way to make Adam Cole a bit more hateable because Johnny is so over at the moment. Um, yeah, this was this was like really well yeah. done. I wish, again, that they would have had Johnny maybe have a bit more time to talk about his achievements and things like that, you know, what they normally do. But, yeah, this was solid. Yeah. I don't know if it will be Adam Cole who is that heel. I think that the seeds are there that it will be Roderick Strong. Which I guess we'll we'll touch on that soon. Well, um, so then it. we get Doc. What else? <laughs> I mean, look, not to belittle your opinion. We'll talk about it shortly. We'll talk about it shortly. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic, who I'm just going to start calling Dijakovic now and just get ahead of the trend. No, he's just going to be Nick. Nick Vick. Nick Vick. Nick yeah. Vick? Nick Vick. Because there's no way they're keeping the Dominic when he goes main roster. I right? reckon that they would keep Dominic over Dijakovic. Americans are simple people. They don't like J's that aren't pronounced like J's. Yeah, well, I've only just gotten used to saying Dijakovic myself. Oh, is that so how you, you spell may it? be right. Because that's not how it's, it's Dijakovic. That's how you would pronounce it. Yeah, that's how I originally pronounced it. Uh, but they always on TV say Dijakovic, Dijakovic. The only one so, that makes me more angry is Seth Rollins. Why is it not Rollins? Why is it Rollins? It's fucking Rollins. Seth Rollins. It's Rollins. Yeah, well, that's just the accent, though. That's that's is no, it? That's just the no, accent, right? No, that's how. Like in certain vernaculars, you would hear Henry Rollins referred to as Henry yeah, Rollins. Yeah, but everyone as well. calls him Seth Rollins, regardless of where they're yeah, from. That's weird. Now, this is one of those glass shatter moments. Now I'm going to hear it all the fucking yeah. time, and it's going to annoy me, and I'm going to be like, fucking dandies. In the words of Simple Plan, welcome to my life. <laughs> Did you just drop a Simple Plan I reference? I fucking love Simple Plan. That's my favorite thing about... Uh, Look, just shut up. When, uh, when I head up to Sydney and hang out... Don't want to hear when it. When I hang out with uh, Big Boy Mikey and his lovely wife, we always get to listen to Simple yeah. Plan in the car. I'm rambling. Nice. I'm sorry. Wait, Big Boy listens to, like, mid-2000s emo pop punk as well? Um, well, Eliza does, and Eliza drives. So ah, I don't... Okay. I knew she was the cool one. She's definitely the cool one. I don't think anyone disputes that. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. I don't know too much about either of these people because they're not, like, the massive names if you're not hugely into NXT. Um, yeah. So, but this was a fantastic match. I really enjoyed this. It, it was a kick. What am I fucking thinking of? Look, it was a really good kick. <laughs> it was a kick. It was one kick. What are you talking about? A fantastic match. I think it was a fantastic match. Like, for a jobber match, this Adam Fry guy is a jobber. Don't know who he is. And, uh, yeah, big kick. One, two, three. Dijakovic yeah. wins. And he, he praises his family for coming to the USA. I think this has been edited because there was a bit of a hullabaloo on Twitter. Uh, he He tweeted something about... Uh, keeping bloodlines pure and uh and apparently at a show that night he'd cut a promo that was kind of white supremacist in its undertones allegedly 
I'm basing this just off off Twitter and what people have said on Twitter. So there's always the the possibility because you know Twitter can go a bit far in the other direction where they take things out of context and just be crazy with it, right? So it could. I, I don't know for sure, but all I know is it looked like potentially this was going to be some kind of white supremacist gimmick. Mm. Yeah. Because the, the, pro- like the problem is <laughs> with white supremacy in – I've obviously just taken down some fucking dumb notes here because I don't remember this at all. And for some reason I have that this was kick ass. Maybe I meant kick face. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the problem with white supremacist things in America is that there is too many people – who are in agreement for it to be a heel, like for it to be a proper heel, especially like like JBL in his heel stage, like when he <laughs> right. was going down south. When he was chasing people on the yeah, border. Yeah, when he was oh, in like God. Texas and like the Carolinas and he wasn't getting the booze that he should be <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, it's, yeah. Like, it's like – Yeah, they're like, hey – this guy's right. Yeah. yeah, I was saying it's like the invo- inverse. I think I was talking about this with CJ of like when you have characters like Daniel Bryan and like kind of heel Sami Zayn and Rusev. Yeah, and they and they do a show in Oregon, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> no, but when they're like Portland's fucking sick, all right, shut up. But, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying. I get what what you mean. Like for, when when you play to a certain well, crowd. Well, it's more like yeah. international fans when they're like. Yeah especially Rusev was like, Americans are dumb. Americans are obese. <laughs> Americans like don't care about anyone else outside of their country. And all the Americans are like, boo. And everyone else was like, isn't this guy supposed to be a heel? <laughs> this spin yeah, some hard I was fruit. sitting there. I was sitting there in a lot of Rusev's run, especially when it was like Rusev versus Roman Reigns. I was like, Rusev's the face. Yeah. Rusev's the face. Roman Reigns just came out and shoved his wife's face in their wedding cake. Like, what yeah, the that fuck? Was really rude. Like, why did he do that? That was very rude. Yeah, I I agree with you. Rusev was the face. No, I get what you're saying, but yeah, um, D- Dominic Dijakovic. Blah, I hate the name. Whatever. D D. Yeah. Double D. Let's call him yeah. Double D. Double D might be a white supremacist. We're not sure. It seems like this promo was edited because, yeah, he started talking about his family and how his family came to the USA and their blood coursed through his veins. And then it sort of had this weird jarring shot of the crowd and then back to him. And he's like, I see the North American championship. And he tells Velveteen Dream to feast his eyes. And that's where it's it's even more troubling. Like if it was, if they are going for a white supremacist thing, which I think they may be rolling back because the tweet's been deleted. And like I said, this promo was edited, it looked like. Uh, if they are going for a white supremacist thing, he was going to go after the North American Championship, which is held by a black man too. So it's kind. It's of... also very odd so, to have a so to have a white supremacist character who is a foreigner. It's, yeah, it's an odd. It's a weird flex. It's a weird flex, but okay. Um, not on board with it. Yeah. Please don't do it, WWE. Yeah, I hope that they're. I hope that they're wheeling it back because. I mean, look, I don't, I don't think it can't be done tastefully, but I think it's very difficult, and I, w- I wouldn't trust anyone to try <laughs> in this situation. Uh, Kathy Kelly asks Undisputed Era about the tension that they have amongst them, and Adam Cole starts talking but gets cut off by William Regal, who comes in and tells him that Johnny has agreed to face Undisputed Era. And Adam Cole's like, "Sick, when do I face him?" And he's like, "Oh no, not you. He wants to face Roderick Strong next week." And this is where I was talking about, like, so you saw after. Takeover, right? They had that little argument where Adam Cole's like, shut off the camera. I don't remember full disclosure because that was a okay, lot of wrestling. That's right. Yeah, it was a big weekend. But after Takeover New York, there was a video that went out and they showed it on last week's NXT as well. And it was basically Undisputed Era coming backstage and Adam Cole being like, what the hell were you thinking, Roddy? Like, rah, rah, why were you there? Blah, blah, and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and yeah, so it looks like there's going to be a bit of tension there and it could just be a tease, but I could see the Undisputed Era having a bit of a mutiny and kicking Adam Cole out because they haven't been very successful under his leadership. Yeah, that's true. And it could be similar to uh, when they kicked him out of the Bullet Club. Yeah. Didn't they kill him? Didn't he die? He was, yeah, he was killed off. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> He's Weird flex. In, in, the, in the All Elite Universe or being the Elite Universe, he is... He is very much dead. Yeah, I reckon they... Uh, that's why it was funny when they brought in Britt Brit Baker and she's like, don't think I forgot like that you killed my boyfriend. <laughs> I think that, yeah, they should do that. They'll just kill him. And then he comes onto the main roster as Cole Adams, baby. Dude, if... Yab, yab. <laughs> it would have to be backwards. <laughs> yab, yab. <laughs> yeah. If he... If, if, if NXT have the balls to kill off a character, man, I, I love that shit. 
I love when people like like I've been crapping on Impact lately, and the best episode of Impact recently was when they killed off Ali. I love it when I love deaths in wrestling. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just because it just reminds me that it's a fiction, yeah. you know? Like, because I feel like wrestling doesn't embrace its its fictional elements enough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, then we get a Born and Aaliyah promo, uh, who, they're my new favorite tag team, by the way. They're basically uh, Lux, if you're familiar with Lux in, like, Wrestling Go and stuff. They're, they're basically Lux, but on NXT, and they're, they're telling uh, Candice LeRae that she should find a partner and face them. Yeah. I did. I didn't really understand this. I get the Lux reference. I can see the, the comparisons there. Yeah. Uh, Similar to Iconics as well. Yeah. I guess. Um, yeah. I don't really know too much about these people, but yeah. I, They're like a, a high fashion Iconics. Yeah. I really like situation. Candice LeRae, so I hope that she does get a partner. <sighs> Maybe. Man. It's a recurring thing on this show to bitch about the way Candice LeRae's been used. I didn't even <laughs> know that she has been used, like, because I don't. She's been Johnny's uh, yeah. wife. That's what yeah. she's been. Which I fucking hate. Yeah. Fucking... Yeah. Because she's yeah. amazing. For sure. And, um, and it's, you watch Being the Elite I too, don't. right? I haven't watched it in like probably three oh, months. I know you used I, to. I used to love it, but it was like once they, once it started being used to build AEW. Double or nothing. I, it's yeah. like, yeah. this is now, I'm just watching promos. Like, I feel like I'm right. watching promos, which I don't like. Well, that's what it was before Yeah, though. but it was like, it was like, it was funny. It was funny. On on being the elite, they've got a recurring thing at the moment where Joey Ryan's getting attacked and everyone's asking him where that blonde that used to protect him is. So it's almost like they're trying to entice her back. I don't know what her contract situation's like, but I've been saying for weeks now, I'm I'm sick of her in NXT because she just gets used as Johnny's wife. And it looks like they're finally trying to rectify that. But for me, it's too late. I'm like, I want her gone. I want her to go where she's respected. Yeah, sorry. I get confused because it's like, they were a tag team, weren't they? Or they were like a... Yeah, they were the world's cutest yeah. tag team. And it was Joey Ryan and, and Candice LeRae. And that's when I feel like you would have tolerated Joey Ryan yeah, back then. Yeah, I, and I liked Joey Ryan like in the early days of the Dick stuff. Like in the yeah. Hangman page. And once that finished, actually once... Because when Joey Ryan comes to World Series Wrestling, his like entrance and the Dick stuff take up half an hour. And there is far too yeah. much talent on the show for me to tolerate half an hour of non-wrestling. Um, anyway, right. um, I get confused because I know that Joey Ryan's wife, his hot-ass wife, um, is also a wrestler. So that's who I thought you were talking about. And then I realized you were still talking about Candice LeRae. Yeah, no, Candice LeRae is the blonde that used yeah. to protect because she was the tag team. And, like, so they had a series of matches with the Young Bucks in PWG. And, like, I remember, like, the moment I fell in love with Candice LeRae was she took a, like – thumbtacks in the mouth super kick Ooh. and i was just like and like her mouth was bleeding and she, i'm just like that's like she's fucking hardcore dude like she and she deserves so much better to be treated as mrs wrestling johnny's wife like it's so bad the way she's been used in nxt she should have been three-time champion i think by it now. was a good way to introduce her like the thing that they had was it was it with selena vega or whatever when she yeah. like went yeah Selena Vega and Andrade yeah, when she yeah. like jumped the barrier I think that was a really kick ass way to introduce her but yeah it's definitely yeah. been put she's almost like Brie Bella like when Brie Bella was um Daniel Bryan's wife like she would come out and she would be yeah. Daniel Bryan's wife and she was also Nikki Nikki Bella's valet yeah. as well <laughs> it was like yeah I yeah. think that Candice Ray no shade to Brie Bella but deserves a little bit better than being treated like um Brie Bella. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. She should be, She, like I said, she should have been women's champion by now. But anyway, Shayna Baszler, who is women's champion, taking on Kyrie Sane. And if Kyrie loses, she will get another, she will never get another shot at the NXT title. This was a good match. Uh, but like we said at the beginning, I, I wish that this wasn't the main event. I wish the other match was the main event because this was kind of a bit shorter than I hoped. And because the ending was kind of a botched, a, not botched, but like a, a dirty finish. Like it was all interference and stuff with Io Shirai. I think it was kind of, it just kind of let me down a little as a main event. Yeah, and I think also knowing that Kyrie got the call up, um, I feel like yeah. it was very predictable. This was probably this was still a fine like encounter, but um, I feel like the rest of the show was so strong that this was kind of like a little bit of like, uh, which makes me sad because I love these two women. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. And and I love Io Shirai as well. And Io Shirai got involved, obviously, uh, which caused the DQ. Uh, she got involved to protect Kairi Sane because uh, Shayna was repeatedly attacking the arm. But it's like, this is a match. Why are you doing this? It kind of felt weird. Uh, then the four horsewomen take care of him and, and Shayna finishes the job. And that's the end of the show. Kairi Sane obviously getting the call up, not going to get another shot again. And Shayna Baszler reigns supreme. And that's NXT for the week. Yeah. I assume that we're getting more Io Shirai versus Shayna Baszler. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Io Shirai will be the next yeah, champion. which will be good. I would have liked... I still think it should be Bianca Belair that takes down that takes down Shayna, but... Yeah, you know. my... um my f- More tangents with Dan, it's tangent field. Um, my football team lost <laughs> their first match last weekend, and I was like, no, we are still undefeated. Undefeated is a mindset. Undefeated. Yes. Greg- undefeated. Yeah. Get it. Um. Greg said so. That's how it works. Shut up. You can't tell me wrong. Um, yeah. That's absolutely how yeah, it works. So I am going to jump on board NXT. I think I'm going to make it a Saturday morning thing. As I said, NXT UK is still yet to grab me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's the general consensus for most people. And I'm, I'm, I'm still sticking with NXT UK, uh, but it does get hard at times. Uh, there's like little nuggets of this could be great. And I'm just hoping that that sort of evolves. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but that does it for NXT this week. Uh, Danders, thanks for jumping on and, and filling big boys, big shoes. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter at Danderfield, on Instagram at Rachel Danderfield. And yeah, that's it. I'm not on Facebook. Don't add me. <laughs> Well played. Well played. I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively have a B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling will fit the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you.